Bonjour, cats and kittens. It's Amy from Saver Salvage Scent, and I hope you are doing great in spite of the day's challenges. I am so excited to share with you today um, my review of and experiences with um, my Lolita Lempica perfume collection. Before I get to that, um, I will just say hello to those of you who might be new to the channel. It's called Save or Salvage Scent. My name is Amy and this mostly uh, focuses on perfume and all things perfume related with occasional other um, creative or DIY projects. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for subscribing and I encourage any of you to leave questions, thoughts, etc. So I am, um, I always love the research and the um, sharing I get to do through this channel. But um, it's interesting, I was thinking, why am I enjoying so today so much in particular? And I think it's because I'm going back to some old favorites and where a lot of my current kind of work or experience is based on like research and new things and um, comparisons and things like that. Um, I'm talking about a line of perfumes that for the most part I've worn for a long time and just caused me, um, put me into uh, wonderful emotions, feelings, um, and I just adore these perfumes. So let's talk about Lolita Lempica. So for those of you who don't know, Lolita Lempica is a um, French fashion house. Um, my take, my narrative is that the fashions are, um, I believe became popular in the like 80s and 90s. They remind me a little bit, for those of you who are familiar with um, Betsy Johnson with, without being quite so um, bombastic or playful. Um, they kind of, to me, have a fairy tale feel or element. Um, there are a few noses that have designed the uh, seven scents I'm going to talk about in my collection uh, today. Um, but overall, I would say they also have a feeling of, um, I would say not only just a fairy tale, but a gothic fairy tale. So uh, without further ado, let me start with um, the scent that kind of started it all. It's one of my absolute favorites, a top 10 of mine. This was like a perfume that I started wear when I started to really understand that I loved perfume. Um, Though I loved a lot of perfumes in the 70s and 80s growing up, um, this was one of the first perfumes that I felt like was me. And um, I felt it was very, very different th than the things that were on the market at the time. So the original Lolita Lempica is in this beautiful bottle. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's again kind of based on fairy tale or even um, Eve's apple. So temptation, etc. Beautiful. Um, this does not smell like apple, but I think the whole thing about temptation and fairy tale is, is very uh, represented. So for those of you who aren't familiar, let me tell you a little bit more about this scent. I'm wearing it on one of my wrists today, and it's one of those things, I think, because I test a lot of perfumes. I haven't been wearing this much lately, and I put it on today, and I was like, right, I love this. Um, so the original scent was uh, first produced in 1997. It is created by um, Anique Minardo. She is a magician. For those of you who don't know her, she has designed many, many, many scents. But um, some of my favorites are Bulgari Black, Hypnotic Poison, and um, Lancome Hypnose. Um, among, again, many, many other things. I think she... so. A lot of the Lolita Lempicas, especially the original and some of its flankers, um, focus on anise and licorice. Um, so, for those of you, some of the, uh, some of you will find that to be a deal breaker. Some of you, like me, will say, "Game on!" Like, love, love that scent. Um, she does anise and licorice like a champ. Like, I feel like that is often um, in powdery scents. Like, um, these are things that run through a lot of her scents. So. Um, this was again created in 1997 first. Let me tell you a little bit about the notes. Um, the top notes are star anise, violet, and ivy. The mid notes are licorice, cherry, 
iris, orris root, and amaryllis, and the base notes are vanilla, praline, tonka, white musk, and vetiver. So this is a heck of a composition. What comes out for me mostly are the powdery things. So in that case, violet, uh, iris, orris root, which is the, the root of the iris. Um, that really comes out, the musk comes out a little bit for me, but mostly um, the licorice-y quality. So anise, licorice, um, even the iris has a little bit of that going on. Um, this is to me just like, yeah, uh, it's, and it's slightly gothic. Um, it's got this, at least when I think about how it compared to the other perfumes on the market at the time and how different this was and it felt, Frankly, a little, um, what word would I use? Quirky, quirky and gothic. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And it, to me, just smells so, God, creamy, powdery, warm, anise -y, wonderful, gorgeous, love it. The original Lolita Lempica. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about six more Lempica scents. I want to say there are like 30 or 40 in the database. There are a lot of flankers. My narrative is that a lot of them were created from the 80s, 90s, thousands. And then my understanding is they all got um, discontinued. And then recently some were put back on the market and in vegan form. So I believe the ones that have remained have still all been reformulated and a lot of these have been taken off the market. The good news is if you're interested in any of these that are off the market, some of them still can be found pretty affordably. So I would say if any of these interest you, look into it now. There's an exception, but for the most part they can be found pretty affordably. Okay, so next. This is the Eau de Désir uh, edition. So there's the there's the original, and there's that. So what are the differences? Um, let me tell you a little bit about this. A couple of these I could not find a nose for. I assume it's Anique Minardo still, but not sure. So this was created in 2010. Um, I would say this has a little less fruit than the first one. Um, it has, to me, even more anise. Um, and it also has like a, um, but yet a generally lighter effect, not quite as heavy, creamy, powdery as the original, but definitely still has the anise going strong in here. Um, so, and there's a little more lemon verbena, just to give you an idea. So the notes are, um, top notes are lemon verbena, Amalfi lemon, mid notes are violet and jasmine, and then the base note is musk. So, um, really great this can be found for i want to say around 45 50 still you can still find it so this is lempica's um eau de désir so next um if i had to choose a favorite maybe i would only choose oh i don't know i can't choose favorites um this perfume is like i'm freaking crazy about it this is the um, Lolita Lempica. Let me read you the whole name because it's very long. Um, this is the, sorry, Midnight Couture Black version of Eau de Minuit. God, I hope I'm saying that right. All right. Um, if, if you've experienced hypnotic poison, this is like hypnotic poison had a creamy gothic sister. It sounds dirty. It is a little bit. Um, okay, so the notes in this, this is produced by the way in 20, or sorry, yeah, 2011. The notes are top, myrrh, anise, ivy, mid, oh no, 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 sorry, sorry, wrong, wrong. Top notes are licorice, <laughs> mid notes, iris and myrrh and jasmine, and base notes, benzoin and vanilla. This is, um, hmm. This is like almost to me a 50% departure from the original. It's way creamier. It's darker and deeper. Um, it is for sure of the night. Like this is a night perfume for me. Sexy as all get out. Um, and to me what makes this different from the original, the vanilla comes through stronger. 
there's a little bit of um, the benzoin and myrrh thing kind of gives it like an incense-y, resinous quality. It is gorgeous, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous thing. Here's one that has gotten very expensive. This is like the Couture edition, and I, I think it's going for like two or three hundred dollars now. My understanding is this is related to an original Minuet version um, that is still somewhat affordable. I want to say like sixty to eighty dollars a bottle. So super resinous, vanillic, gorgeous. You will have to beat others off with a stick when you wear it. Okay. Next. This is a major departure, I would say, from the three, um, and more recent. Goodness gracious. All right, this is um, sweet. So, like a, bit, a bite is taken out of the adorable apple. I don't know if you can see, but for all of these, the sprayer is the stem. I'm just going to spray this for kicks because it smells so darn good. Oh, so good. Um, this, though, I would not, like... Let me put it this way. If I smelled this and was told it wasn't, um, it was another perfume, I would not know it's a Lolita de Lempica. There's a few things running through, but it's kind of its own scent to me. I have a mouthful of perfume right now. Can you tell? Blah, blah, blah. All right. With the exception of, I think there's violet or iris in here. Um, yeah, a, a departure from the original. The nose is Anne Filippo, for those who aren't familiar with her. She has um, created Chloe Love Story, Coach perfumes, some for Jill Malone, some for Givenchy. Um, great nose. Let me tell you about the notes in this one. Top notes are sour, cherry, and sugar. Mid notes are cacao, iris, and angelica. And the base notes are musk, cashmere, wood. Um, this to me is a not too, what should I say, sophomoric. It's still somewhat sophisticated cherry lip gloss scent. Um, this does not smell like a kid's body spray, which some smell like cherry lip gloss. This still smells sophisticated enough. It is gorgeous. It's a great gourmand. It's not super complex. Um, you get a little of the cacao, but mostly I get like cherry lip gloss. It's beautiful. This you can find really cheaply. I think it's still on the market. 20, 25 bucks, something like that. So, Lolita Lempica Sweet. All right, so now we're gonna move into a line called LLM. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. My French is the pits. Okay, so, oh, I love this so much. Ugh. All right, this is the original LLM. LLM means he loves me, I believe. Um, this, I will just say right off the bat. Okay, first it was produced in 2013. I cannot find a nose for this. Um, to me, this is my favorite vanilla coconut scent. There's more going on. I'm going to read you the notes, but that's how I would classify it quickly. Um, the notes are top, lime, bergamot, neroli, mid, coconut, um, ylang ylang, and jasmine. Base notes, vanilla, myrrh, and what am I missing? Sandalwood. So you get a little bit, really, of all of those things, um, but really what is deep, or comes through the most is coconut. I mean, a little bit of the um, lime in the beginning, but that fades down quickly, and then you get coconut and vanilla. And it's, to me, one of the most sophisticated, beautiful coconut scents. When this was, um, when I bought this about five years ago, I would say, um, I paid only like 20 or $25 for this. I think it's up to the 30s, 40s now, but you can still find it. So this is the original LM. And the, the reason, the way you know it's that is you can see the gold letters, but it's clear in between. Um, I'm gonna show you the difference with the other two flankers. So LM, beautiful coconut, vanilla scent, gorgeous. So um, I think it smells so sophisticated and classy for the price. All right. A flanker of LM. This is LM. Ooh, sorry. LM à la folie. God, I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know what that means. Folie. Does it mean dance or joy or something like that? Anyways, tell me if you know. Um, this was created in 2014. You can still find this mm, somewhat affordably, like $45.50 we're getting into now. This was a tester that I bought. I got this cheaply like five plus years ago, um, so that therefore no cap. Um, the top notes are mand mandarin and bergamot. 
The mid notes are Lang Lang Jasmine, and the bass notes are Myrrh, Amber, and Sandalwood. So imagine the LM that I just talked about that I said was an amazing coconut vanilla scent. It has a lot of the same things that does, minus the coconut, and then amping up, uh, adding amber. So it's this ambery, fruity, vanillic, gorgeous thing. Um, this I believe is considered a like parfum extreme, so it's like a deeper perfume. Um, so this is this is to me gorgeous. And talk about like smells expensive and wonderful. Um, you can you know again find this in the 40s to 50s. If you can get your hands on it, it's so so good. I mean to me this is like a two or three hundred dollar perfume good. So this is uh, LM à la folie, beautiful. All right, last, um, a flanker, the original. This is El Lem and, uh, sorry, I meant to mention, for the a la folie or the extreme, the difference is the gold is in between letters instead of on the letters. So the original is gold letters with glass in between, clear glass. This is gold glass in between. So that's how you know the difference. Um, sometimes online they don't even know the difference, so just FYI. Um, this is, uh, gosh, French, Edition de Ete, it means, help me, um, basically like summer edition of LM. Uh, so let me read you a little bit about the notes. This was first created in, I think like mid, I think like, I want to say like, Something like that. Um, the top notes are lemon leaf and mandarin, the mid notes are lang lang and jasmine, and the bass notes are myrrh, amber, and sandalwood. So very similar to the original one without coconut, amping up the lemon and it's a little lighter. So it really is like the LM summer edition. It also has some real greenness in it. Like to me this is lemony green. Mm. You do still get a little amber, sandalwood, myrrh, like the original. Oh God, so good. Um, this you can find still, I wanna say like 30, 40 bucks. Um, people don't care about it. It's great, especially if you like lemons um, or citruses, and but you want it to have some sophistication, not smell like every other summer scent. This is great. So this is the LM Summer Edition by Lolita Lempica. So I would love to hear from you. Um, I feel like Lolita Limpica doesn't, at least the flankers, don't get talked about a lot. I would love to hear from you as far as do you wear any of these? Are any of you Lempica uh, collectors? Did any of you find the original one to be really pivotal in your life like me? Um, and last but not least, who is a designer that I haven't talked about that you would like to learn more about? Let me know. All right, cheers. Talk to you soon. Have a great night. Bye.